Today I'm going to show you the basic installation items for a 20 kW RESD Kohler backup generator. We use the D model because it's the aluminum housing unit as you see here and not the C model which is the plastic housing uh, that other contractors may use. I feel that the uh, aluminum housing is a much better unit and uh, it just looks better in my opinion. When we do our installations, we pour a concrete pad. We don't use the gravel base with the 4x6 landscape timber frames. This is a much more durable base for the unit to sit on. And uh, we don't have to worry about rodents getting into the unit by digging under the unit in the gravel. Once we set it on the uh, pad, we drill holes, use mechanical drive-in anchors to anchor the unit to the pad per code and uh, to me that's just a much cleaner installation something that we do is that we run our wiring up through the pad before we pour and whether it be pvc conduit or in this case armored cable we don't like to run ours to the back side and bring it in the back this is a much cleaner installation and uh, it leaves a little bit more room for the piping for the gas and again in my mind it just looks better so we bring our armored cable in and we connect it to the uh, dividing plate with the appropriate connectors we have the service cables here we have the 120 volt battery charging circuit here they both land over here on the terminal block appropriately labeled from the manufacturer very straightforward installation we also have the low voltage communication cabling and a cat5 cable that we run up and if you can see up in here we have it again through the metal but it goes in this chase that divides the low voltage and the line voltage and then it comes over here into the low voltage compartment and again the communication cable terminates on the terminal blocks here the communication cable must be belden uh, twisted shielded per the manufacturer's installation instructions and we ground it on the generator end. It's only grounded on one end in this particular instance because that's what the manufacturer wants. The Cat5 cable is not installed on this unit because this house is an 1860s farmhouse that does not have high speed internet. We've run the cable that way if they ever do get internet and want that, we don't have to dig the yard back up. When we install our batteries, we date them for warranty purposes and for replacement purposes so we can easily see the date. This particular unit is connected to a 500 gallon propane tank that we installed. We flow mold it so we didn't have to dig up the entire yard. We come up to the unit, shut off valve, regulator, flex fuel line with the appropriate connections, support for the regulator, and a PVC sleeve for the protection of the copper piping from weed eaters and any other thing that may be uh, at the edge of the ground. Propane tank must be at least 10 feet away from the generator. We put it in a little treed area of the yard. She's gonna plant bushes around everything. Possibly a little fence so we can isolate it from the, from the house. This particular unit has the RDC2 controller, as most uh, of the units we put in do. Of course, it has your main circuit breaker and then um, protection circuit breaker for the uh, alternator itself here your oil filter your dipstick for checking oil your oil fill port which is just a pull and push type system it's not a threaded cap as it used to be this is your oil drain line we actually use a pump on all of ours but for the homeowner that wants to change their oil it's pretty simple you remove this door pop this drain line down, open the valve, let the oil drain out. If you're gonna do that, you might wanna run the unit for a few minutes to warm the oil so that it flows out more easily or you could be out here for quite a while. Um, the governor, which is the carburetor, if you will, or I shouldn't say the carburetor, I should say the, uh, the accelerator. Uh, that's what controls the speed of the generator. Low oil pressure switch and of course, the air filter is here, muffler is here, um, pretty basic little unit. The controller is the brain of the unit, if you will. 
It scrolls information with the date and the time, the next time it's scheduled to exercise, uh, when the next maintenance is due, and then of course it has a battery voltage on it, it's telling you that it's in standby, and then it'll flash the hours. It's a brand new unit, so it's got you know, almost one hour on it. We're in auto, we're ready to go. Green is good. We're showing that we have utility voltage connected to the home. Of course, the generator is not running. And if for some reason this generator doesn't start or doesn't run correctly, this is where the homeowner would come out and see what does this controller say. Is it telling you that it's over crank? Is it telling you that it's under voltage? Uh, there are several different codes that could be displayed. This is where you would look. As a service provider, we would come out, see that it's in uh, some sort of fault, or if the homeowner has reset it, we connect our computer to this little USB port here, and we uh, can connect with our site tech software, and we can see what the actual codes were. That allows us to provide much better technical service and support to the client and address the actual problem, not come out and guess and kind of think we thought we saw something or any of the other old adages of technical support. Much more streamlined, much easier. So this little system here was installed. We're waiting for an inspector right now. So we can't bury our trench back until he looks at that. We have the doors off. And then we dug over here to the home. I'm gonna walk over here and show you the transfer switch real quick. It's a basic 200 amp whole house generator that has an overhead electrical service. We mounted this unit outside because the house has no room inside. And it's the back of the house, so it's not seen as much as other things. Apologize for the sun. We came down out of the bottom of the meter, ran our service cables into there. Of course, all of this is made at the factory. Then we run our generator wiring up and all of our other piping. The one thing I wanted to show you was the control wiring. Let me get in here closer. This is where the control wiring comes in and notice that there's no ground on this end. One of the biggest problems we see with generators that have been installed by electricians who don't normally install Kohler is number one, they use the incorrect wire and it's a big, big deal. You have to use the twisted shielded wire for the proper communication. Number two, if they use the correct wire, sometimes they'll ground it on both ends. That will give you faults of communication and some errant codes and sometimes the generator will not work. If they do run the correct wire and they do ground it properly, no offense to the Generac installers, but a lot of the contractors we see will run this communication wire in the same pipe as the service wires. Um, number one, you can't do that by code. And number two, um, the manufacturer says you can't do that. So Generac does that because they're using line voltage controls. We don't do it because it's a low voltage control and you want your low voltage separated from your line voltage. That will eliminate any interference with voltage. What will happen is you will either blow that board or you will blow the board on the generator. Either one is not good. Either one is not covered under warranty because it's an installation error. So if you're doing that, make sure that you separate those out and get them in the proper conduits. Our battery charging circuit, we put a fuse block in and we run it of course separately. Uh, that eliminates any taking of precious breaker spaces inside the house or in a sub panel. And that's pretty much it. This wire here is of course run through the house over here to inside the house here. Uh, not what I would like to do, but that's where the old one was. So we replaced it with the proper SCR. Not the most aesthetically pleasing uh, location, but the way the house was originally wired 100 years ago, um, that's what we had to do. So that's a uh, basic 20KW installation. Uh, a few points of reference for you trying to do it yourself. And uh, hope you enjoyed it.